What is going on? We have the Part of the Culture podcast. I'm here with Jackie. She is a up and coming news anchor and I wanted to interview her. I wanted to get tips on what, you know, how I can improve my media, what's the future of media, especially with like social media and we're going to get into her life a little bit. So, welcome Jackie. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Let's get right into it. So, you know, I, I really want to find out more about your news side and and so kind of what's your history with that and where you at with that and just kind of let the people know who you are. Okay. So my name is officially Jacqueline Quinones. Ooh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, I think I'm starting to go with Jacqueline now because it's the more grown up version. Um, I used to be Jackie, you know, for a long time. So now I'm ready to just be Jacqueline. Um, but with that comes, um, let's say, let's jump into news. So for me, my journey with news started right out of college. I graduated four years ago. Okay. Um, no, actually. Congratulations. Well, thank you. I have a degree in sociology. Okay. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with that, but I'm big on social issues. Um, what's you know, a, what's the biggest social issue you're big on right now? I think it's always and will always be race, racism, you know, whether it comes from, you know, and it, in all cultures, I'm not sp one specific race, but because sure. I'm Mexican and I grew up on the east side of San Jose and, you know, I seen firsthand how things were dealt with um, back home and, you know, um, I'm very humble for that and I think that's kept me grounded and I want to be an, a community activist, community leader, I want to inspire, um, I know where I came from. Um, for sure. The history also is I came from, I'm first generation, so I feel like I have a lot to prove and... You're the first generation that was that was born here in America? Correct. Your parents are from? Right, born in Mexico. For sure. I'm also a first generation. Okay. My, my, uh, I don't have a relationship with my father, but my mother was born in Panama. Mm -hmm. So I am the first generation, so I can definitely relate with that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so first generation, go ahead. And for me, their dream for us was obviously their version of the American dream, which was success, meaning owning a home or just being happy. And I think happiness for everyone is different, right? Yeah. Um, so for me and what I wanted for myself was I, I just didn't see myself doing a nine to five job. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not built just to sit down and just be on the computer all day. There's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I'm an active person. I yeah. like to socialize. I like to talk to people. Same here. Um, but I want to live my life with a purpose, just bigger than myself. And with that, I feel like there's inspiring stories where you meet people, you just never know what they're going through on a day-to-day -day sure. basis. And there's so many stories out there that, you know, I kind of want to dig in and dig deeper. There's always a story behind the story. Yeah, there is always a story behind a story. That's why I love this podcast. That's why I love mm -hmm. asking questions because it really, you really dive in to who people are and you really get to know people on such a different level. It's like a lot of times, I don't know what it is about the mic or if it's the camera, I don't know what it is, but you really get to know someone, you right. know, like I, I've always known you're passionate, but like that your, you know, race is huge to you. I didn't know that. Right. I didn't know that, you know, that you really wanted to be an activist. I know that I just, and I've always just known you wanted to, you know, cover big news stories right. and, and I've seen, you know, I've seen her like on Telemundo you know, and, you and know. different things. So. But yeah, keep going. So, you know, how did you, what made you want to do the news? What made you want to use that platform to get away from the nine to five and, right. and to make you, and to find happiness? How did you discover that that's it? So, okay, so again, I was working some nine to five job right out of college, unhappy, not sure what I was doing it, you know, why I was doing it for the money, of course. Yes. But secondly, I wasn't passionate about it. I'm like, okay, well, I had to recollect what makes me passionate about anything like what drives me what inspires me and honestly like i'm not gonna lie i've been a news junkie since i was young i used to i was raised watching news especially like the mundo and yeah all of that stuff with my, with my grandparents and that's that was our bonding time in front of the tv watching these tragic stories and it was just like man why does everything have to be so tragic but here's the thing there are beautiful and wonderful stories that are not being told every single day yeah i agree and I feel like it's my job to try to dig deep and find those stories that aren't being told. I feel like I'm a voice for people who don't have a voice. And I, I mean, when I was working for a station for a period of time, you know, 
my passion came from finding those stories, exposing the truth. You know, everyone has their own truth. There's two sides to every story, but it was digging deeper, you know? And there was one story that hit home to me because it was one of my friends, friends that went missing. Oh, wow, wow. So it was like with social media, it's like, who, where is he? You know, find this guy. And I was like, I felt like because I had such a tough connection to the story, yeah. that it was my job to try to find out more about this story. So I, you know, was all over social media about it. Um, I reached out to some friends. I talked to, you know, they were like, how can we let the news know? How can we expose this? I mean, this guy went missing for a period of time, and to, to this day, it's the biggest story. Just look it up. It's Keith Green. Keith Green. Okay. Wow. So, I mean, the story still, you can find it, Google Is it, it. Has it been solved? Um, to some degree, but I suggest that you look that up because it's such a big story. Say the name one more time. Keith Green is his name. Um, he, he went missing, and he was in Millbrae. He okay. lived in Millbrae. He lived in a mansion, and... There's some custody issues with the mother of his child. And again, he was friends to a friend of mine. So yeah. it was like, man, like that hits home. And when it's hitting home, it's like you feel like you have some role that you got to just help in some way help. You have a voice that other people don't have. Yeah. You, you're working for the news station. It's your job to dig deeper. So for I sure. Did. So that's crazy. I'm going to look yeah. into that. Please do. So getting into... I always say I like to add value and so one of my goals was to kind of pick your brain about you went to school for for sociology for sociology so not journalism you not didn't go to school for no. sociology and journalism okay so you did not go to school for that so how long after you got out of school did, did you it how did took you discover me about a year and a half a friend of mine was in was working and it just you know it sparked my interest. I'm like you know what I have the face and personality for television. Okay. okay? I got the face. You got oh, the face. I got Telemundo face. Okay? <laughs> so this was recording too. You know, funny. but I felt like I have something in me. Like I just I love the attention. No, yeah. you know, but I love it we in a good do. way. Everyone loves attention. Yeah, but in a good way. I feel like I have a platform. I'm vibrant. I have a personality to showcase, and I'm just like you know what I have a great smile too. Like, yeah, I got a jacked up. <laughs> So I'm just like, you know, use that, put that to use, but for good, for yeah. good use, you know what I'm saying? And so I feel like when I look up stories and I, you know, and people still reach out to me and tell me different stories, like, hey, you should, you know, talk about this or that. And it's, it's great to hear people's feedback because yeah. then you're like, this is what the people want. Yeah. You know? I definitely think that even like my movement, I, I, and I've told her this, you know, off, off the podcast, but. I think that she should be covering a lot of stuff. I definitely think yeah. that you should have your own independent. Yeah. Um, and I'm not. I don't you know. I need to follow you, but I definitely think you know. That's why, like me, I'm not gonna like. I just don't feel like I can wait. Like I wanted to. It's hard for me to partner up with people because I kind of move at my own speed. Mm -hmm. But I could definitely see you doing just even it, not always even the craziest stories but i could always right. see you doing your own stories right. me and jackie actually i worked with her on one project where it was school violence right no, it was school shooting yeah school shooting so but do you remember why no i because don't because i was in the las vegas massacre oh wow so that story wow. hits home to me because i was there and so as a journalist you know, it's crazy. It's because I'm the story within the story. Yeah. And it's such a tragic story to this day. And it's still, you know, there's so many issues that people still don't know. They don't yeah. know why he did it. Yeah. You know, blame on mental illness, which is a whole other issue. There's like conspiracy theories. For sure. Even do it. For, yeah. All these, but it's like people will never know. At the end of the day, all these people died because of yeah, this man. That, that did happen. And I, you know, I thought to do.